we're setting off on the Mount Woodner hike when we're not distracted by Caterpillar road trains. <laughs> Have you ever seen one of those in your life, Aidan? Yep. Kind of looked like a silky thread type thing, didn't it? Who knows? We'll have to get onto Google with that later. So we're heading off on this walk now. Apparently an easy walk to the top of this rock. We'll see about that. That's what they said. That's what they said. So before we started this walk, we had to get past this Aussie road train and I haven't seen one of these for a long, long time. Bit of a fluffy one. Actually, I was putting something in the bin and it scared the bejesus out of me. I turned around and there it was. It came out of nowhere. I thought it was a snake. But no, just a long conga line of caterpillars of some description. Probably some moth we don't need in the bush. This is Mount Woodner, <clears throat> which we're walking to the top of at the moment. And they've built this little wall down the base because of course we're on the Air Peninsula where it's very dry and the little wall is a water catchment direction you can kind of see I think that it goes around the base and pushes the water into a water catchment area it'll be easy they said yeah probably if you're a fit 20 year old <laughs> not too bad actually. I'm sure it'll be worth it when we get to the top. So some of the benefit of reading all the signs that you put up <laughs> is you actually find out some information. Oh, what did you find out? Well they've been quarrying granite here for quite a while. Yes I read that too. In different areas and they're different colors mm -hmm. different types but some of the granite from around here actually makes up the granite on the foreshore outside Sydney Opera House. Ah, is that a pinky colour by memory? Yes. That's why. And if you look behind you, we also have one of the natural features, which is called an A-tent. An A-tent. Where the granite slabs have lifted up slightly to form a nice little cubby underneath, which would be... Oh, we could have slept there last night, love. It'd have been out of the wind, but yeah. it might have been a bit hard on the back. So that's where we camped last night there. Pretty cool. We made it to the top! What a surprise! It's windy! <laughs> Hang on to your hats. Hang on to your hats, folks. Love that air peninsula wind. Oh, it's a good fresh day. He's reading all the signs out to me. It looks, if you look closely, you can see the glassy quartz crystals and large pieces of red feldspar <laughs> up to 50 mil long. This is why you want him at your quiz nights, people. You quiz nighters in Queensland. This is why you want him on your quiz team. <laughs> Love him. So the surface is a little like Uluru, which I've been lucky enough to be at a few times. But obviously this is much more granity, quite spectacular with all the colours. And uh, I suppose you'd call it a coarse sand under your feet, which has come off the granite over the years. This is the drain catchment area that we showed you earlier when we were going up the rock, runs off into this. Would love to see the rock sometime with all the water. Would be great. When we went walking earlier, this little caterpillar train, well not so little, it's about a metre and a half, was making a, its way across some gravel. And in an hour or so, this is where it's come to. We didn't think we'd be able to spot it again. Little... Aidan did a rough count. About 82. A metre and a half, and about 82 of them or so. I mean, they're brave. They just came across the hot gravel and uh, 
I wonder half of them weren't pipped off by the birds. I haven't seen something like that for quite a while. So we've just discovered another bunch living on the tree. These ones are much older by the looks. Kind of turn into David Attenborough when you're out here. Everything's quite fascinating. Probably some innocuous moth that we don't need out in the bush. But the life cycle's interesting nonetheless. This is me approaching the bush toilet in Australia. Always push the door open and have a little look-see first. Make sure there's not any of those little slippery, slippery, suckery snakes in here. Always shut the door after you um, because it's always so much cooler in there at the moment than out here. They can get under those little gaps under the door, pop themselves in there for a nice little sleep and you walk in to go to the toilet. I've only ever have had it happen once. Uh, there was a python in a toilet, so that didn't bother me too much. I'd much rather run into one of them than a brown snake. Anyway, that's my little bushy tip for the day. Always gates. Whoa! <laughs> Gates lead to the best exploring. The joy of being the driver rather than the navigator, you don't have to get out and open all the gates. She'll complain everything. But... We're at some other rocks now. Now, they look like they're spelt pygmy, but it's probably something like me, something like that. But these ones are on private property, which you can access. Obviously, you shut the gates, leave everything has, sorry, leave everything how you found it. But I just feel like I'm going to be shot at any moment. Do you, Aiden? No. <laughs> like the Wild West. Warfields. Yeah. Below the goiter line here, folks. So, Grain Central. Are you playing a tune? <laughs> I think that's what you're supposed to do. Play a tune on the emu. It's very cute. Papa emu. And the little, blue eyes. And the little babies there. 